Welcome to Full Frontal. I'm Samantha B, and we are back after two months away. Fortunately, not much happened while we were gone. The Delta variant surge across the country. The Surfside condo collapse. The January 6th committee. Andrew Cuomo resigning. The 2020 Olympic Games are officially underway. Wildfires burning across California. Mike Richards has been fired as executive producer of Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. He was producing Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune, but ironically lost it all because he was the whammy. Americans have mostly been focused on our problems at home, but right now our government is reminding us just how badly we can also f*** things abroad. Tonight, two decades of American fight seemingly erased in roughly two weeks. Last weekend, chaos throughout the country as the Taliban took province after province. Thousands flooded the airport in a desperate attempt to flee the Taliban. A suicide bomb attack outside the airport, killing 13 U.S. service members. 60 Afghan civilians were killed, too. The U.S. carried out a drone strike in Kabul to eliminate an imminent threat believed to be a suicide bomber. The strike inadvertently killed as many as 10 Afghan civilians, including six children. This is the tragic end of an American military occupation that spanned two decades, four presidential administrations, and at least five different major trends in women's denim. Skinny jeans were done before the war in Afghanistan. The U.S. should have never invaded Afghanistan without an exit strategy, and many people over the last 20 years are responsible for this crisis. But luckily, conservatives have boiled all that history down to one convenient explanation. Biden did it. Joe Biden deserves to be impeached for a higher crime and misdemeanor of dereliction of duty. You know, for President Biden to try to throw all this on the former administration is a lack of a responsibility and accountability. He owns this. Absolutely, 100 percent. He owns it. I think the president of the United States should come out and say all bets are off and I'd start killing bad guys. To be fair, Biden does deserve his share of the blame. You do kind of have to own it when you're overseeing the world's worst Irish goodbye. In fact, for months, advocates urged the Biden administration to airlift out Afghan allies, just as the federal government did after the Vietnam War. You know a situation is f when people are like, why can't we do it more like we did in Vietnam? But as the world watches in horror as Afghans desperately try to save their families, Republicans and a lot of the media appear to be much more concerned with how this crisis moves the political football. An overwhelming of Americans uh, now know that this country is heading in a horrible direction. Just 29 percent say we are heading in the right direction. And that's that's a poll that, you know, is going to take down Democrats in 2022. I take no comfort in the fact that this might be good for Republicans politically. It's true. The only thing that gives Dan Crenshaw comfort is making Pete Davidson feel bad for being right. If a lot of the criticism of Biden seems hypocritical, well, that's because it is. Just last year, Trump and his administration bragged about making a withdrawal deal with the Taliban, so it's pretty rich to see them walking back their culpability now. Unfortunately, as people across the political spectrum fight to point fingers away from themselves, it's going to be the Afghans left behind who will suffer the most severe consequences. Women have already been sent home from their jobs and universities. The stoning and lashing is already happening. What they are saying it's much different than what they are doing on the ground. As soon as they enter to the towns, they start burning the, uh, the cities, the businesses, and uh, capturing the people, especially the people who serve with the U.S. military in Afghanistan. While the Biden administration did somewhat speed up the evacuations and visa processing over time, it wasn't nearly enough. But at least fear-mongering conservatives were able to switch from worrying about Afghanistan to worrying about people from Afghanistan. I've talked to people who say that 90 percent of the people who are coming into the country are totally unvetted. Is it really our responsibility to welcome thousands of potentially unvetted refugees from Afghanistan? If history is any guide, and it's always a guide, we will see many refugees from Afghanistan resettle in our country in coming months, probably in your neighborhood. Have any of these people been vetted? Are you sure? I mean, a swarm of people loaded that C-17 transport the other night, 840 people, mostly men, by the way, take a look. These refugees are a threat to our nation and even worse, total sausage party. 
To be clear, Afghans arriving in the U.S. are vetted. Most undergo a complicated 14-step process to apply for a visa, and many are sent to other countries where they undergo robust security screening. The last step is singing all the words to America's song, A Horse With No Name. On Monday, the U.S. officially finished with evacuation efforts, but left behind over 100,000 people who might have been eligible for expedited visas but are now trapped under the complete control of the Taliban. That includes many former interpreters for the U.S. who put themselves and their families' lives on the line to help our country. Back in 2014, when I was there, um, uh, uh, I used to work as a translator. I lost my brother because of because of working with American. What would the Taliban have done to you? They were gonna kill me right away. Zach, trapped without any assurances from the country he had fought alongside and risked his life for, for years. This is the worst and worst and dangerous situation now here in Kabul too. Calling this exit strategy a train wreck is an understatement. Last week, the Biden administration finally agreed to grant humanitarian parole to some Afghans, allowing immigration processing for vulnerable Afghans to be completed here in the U.S. And that is great and will save lives, but it shouldn't have taken tragic images on TV to make us respond. Just like how we shouldn't have spent two decades occupying a country. We screwed up how we went into Afghanistan. We screwed up how we stayed in Afghanistan. We screwed up our deal to leave Afghanistan. And now we screwed up withdrawing from Afghanistan. At every step, we f***ed up. The least we can do is give refuge to the very people whose lives and homes are aimless war devastated. Truly, it is the bare minimum. We helped create this mess, which means it is our responsibility to help clean it up. We'll be right back. Aw, thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, hit subscribe and visit our page for more videos. Or if you'd like to be radicalized, leave YouTube on autoplay.